everybody, this is John from DroidDog.com and I just wanted to take a moment here to make a quick video on Android 2.2 Froyo, which I installed on my Nexus 1 uh, the night before last. I guess I've been using it for, uh, I don't know, maybe 40 hours and uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the experience I've had, the, uh, the problems I've run into, and there are a couple, as well as some of the new features that I really love. So, um, whether you're nervous about manually doing the update and you want to wait to get it over the air, or you don't have a Nexus One and you just want to see what the uh, Froyo buzz is all about, check it out. Maybe I'll show you some features that you haven't seen elsewhere. And if you're watching this at YouTube, click the link below the video so you can see this post at Droid Dog where uh, you'll find screenshots and uh, maybe some thoughts that I'll forget to include in the video here, all right? All right, let's get to it. So let's take a look at the changes that you'll notice just by poking around the UI a little bit. Right off the bat, you'll notice that there are phone icon and a web icon surrounding the app drawer button at the bottom. So that frees up two icon slots for you on the screen, which I think is nice. If you go to your recent apps, you'll notice that you get an extra row here so that eight are displayed instead of the uh, six that we used to see. Now if you go to add a Google search widget, you'll have the option there. Do you want it to be just for the web, just for apps, just for contacts, or all? So I'm going to select all, and I can tap this. You see a little down arrow under the G there. Tap that and change what I'm searching. So if I just want to search the web, I'll just tap that. However, if I just leave it as is, I'm searching all my contacts, the web, uh, market. So let's just do Noah. So you'll see he shows up there as a contact. I'm going to type his whole name and see what happens if it'll give me a web option too. So here with the magnifying glass, you can see up there with that icon, it's a in contact there. I want to search for him on the web, so I'll just search that. And we get a Google's re result back on uh, Kravitz for the web. But you can launch from there too, so if I search backgrounds, and there we go. All right, so I guess I should start with the problems I've run into because a lot of you will probably watch that introduction and say, wait, what, this thing causes causes new problems. I don't want to have to uh, deal with any of that. Um, you know, I've, I've heard of a few different problems and these might, you know, I don't know what these might be from. It could be from software installed, uh, problems with hardware. Um, when I mentioned one of the little issues I was having on Twitter, I got some people replying back with completely different issues. Um, some people said it made their screen feel less responsive. Some people said it slowed down. I didn't experience any of that. Um, what I did notice was a change in the market software. It was going a lot slower than it had been before I did the update and now it seems to be just fine. And uh, thanks to Justin Hub 2003, Justin Hubbard who uh, has written one article for Droid Dog in the past, uh, for telling me how to take care of uh, that issue that is probably the primary source of a lot of people's problems after the update. If you go into settings, applications, manage applications, and then all, and look for the market. I can't remember if it actually starts with an M or not here. That's why I'm going a little slow. There it is. Just clear the data and clear the cache. I'm not going to do that again because I just did it a couple of hours ago and it takes a while uh, for the app to start working correctly again, or quickly I should say, after you do that. But it does seem to have resolved my issue of the market going very slow right after flashing the 2.2 uh, ROM. Another problem that I was having was the market that I was not able to see all paid apps, just some of them, and this probably has something to do with copy protection. One of them is an app I frequently use called SoundTrail, and if I do a search for it, all I see is the free edi edition there. Um, I had the same issue with Tapatalk, which is a copy protected app. I see the free version only. Uh, so it looks like I'm having some issues with copy protection. It's not just all paid apps, because if I go... Um, oops back to the market home and let's say games you can see that I do have paid apps there um, so I'm hoping that that will uh, be resolved soon and here you can see that of my downloaded apps all of these have updates available some of them have to be done manually but most of them say update next to them and you can just click the update all button Permissions have changed for 5 of 23 apps with updates available. Click OK, OK, OK to update the 18 apps with no permission changes. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Now this is one of those features that 
I thought was going to come a long time ago. I'm really happy to see it. I'm grateful for it. But I used Linux exclusively for a couple of years, and I, I can remember uh, when we were anticipating Cupcake, everybody was talking about all, all the crazy stuff that might come along with Cupcake. I was convinced that uh, <laughs> the ability to update all apps at once would be there. Regardless, it's there now. It's uh, so handy. I love doing this. Just tap it, set the phone down, go have a sandwich, and it's finished. The only other negative change that I've seen is that in my car dock, which I'm not going to go grab right now, um, it, those of you who have the Nexus One car dock know that it covers up your volume rocker on the phone, but the dock itself has a volume rocker on top. That doesn't work for me with Froyo. Um, it didn't work with the last ROM I had, but that was uh, Motoko's desire, so that wouldn't be uh, you know, expected to work. So I'm not sure why that's not working. Maybe there's something wrong with my dock. I'd be interested to know if others are having the same problem. Do a search for Flash. Flash Player 10.1 Beta. All right, I've tried this a few times now. The, the goal here is to do a performance comparison between the HTC Incredible uh, using the sense that HTC has included with the phone and it's running Android 2.1 and of course the Nexus One running Android 2.2. Uh, so even when I press, uh, this is not the, the screen right before the main anim animation here, but even when I press the start button on both at the same time, it seems like they're a little bit off. Uh, to me, it seems like the Incredible is choppier. There's some dropped frames going on there. Um, so I've turned down the volume on the Nexus One so it won't be too irritating. I'll try to get these uh, synchronized, as close to being synchronized as possible. And you tell me which one has the better performance. King Tuna, Tuna King was busy practicing his ghost routine for Halloween. Goosty, 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 I'm a goosty, I don't like anybody because I'm a goosty, scary, 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 scary goosty, nobody is quite as scary as me. Well boy, that was fun. Ah, the 24th of December, Halloween, costume time. Hurrah! Why, thank you boy, it is frighteningly accurate, but where's your costume? Oh, I see. A surprise, eh? Well, right now I fancy some party food. To the pantry with me. And that's why, based on rational reason and deduction, I don't believe in... What do you think? Is the N1 smoother? So, it's a ghost. I told you that so there you have it. A quick look at Android 2.2 Froyo. Um, Andrew Steffi over at Droid Dog has a, a more in-depth three video review of Froyo posted. So uh, be sure to check that out. And of course, there's going to be more coverage coming up on Droid Dog. Take care. Hey,